Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Niamtu, lovethatface.com. Thanks for following our channel, or I hope you do. Please subscribe. Uh, I'm in Richmond, Virginia. I do cosmetic facial surgery. Uh, from here to here, I don't do boobs, bellies, and butts. And we have about 21 million YouTube videos right now. So thank you so much. I enjoy this international audience. And today, this discussion is for doctors and it's for patients. And I'll explain this to you. There is very few things that are as important in cosmetic surgery than before and after pictures. And you can really tell a lot uh, about somebody, uh, what kind of doctor they are, what kind of detail uh, they pursue, and a lot, a lot of things by their before and after pictures. <clears throat> now, first of all, good doctors take a lot of pictures and use standardized photography. What does that mean? That means it's uh, same camera, same room, same background, uh, same lighting, um, same position, no jewelry, no makeup, and it's very important. Now, there's so many scammers out there. You see before and after pictures on the internet and they do these things like they take the before picture with no flash, so it has a lot of shadow. They take the after picture with a flash and it looks like it's a great result in, in it's, so there's a lot of photographic uh, bias in cheating out there, but you know what? Uh, contemporary consumers are very savvy and they can pick it up. So it's very important for surgeons to take uh, their standardized before and after pictures. And since I only do cosmetic facial surgery, that's what we're gonna talk about. Now, the second part of this usage is about half of my practice is from out of town and many international patients as well. And so people are always sending me patients, uh, excuse me, people are always sending me pictures. And w when somebody sends a picture, what's the easiest thing for, do, for them to do? They're gonna take their phone and they're gonna take some selfies, okay? It, that doesn't work, it's so inaccurate. And let me explain a couple things. So if I want, say, a side picture like this, that's gonna show the profile, and a t patient takes a selfie and they go like this, that doesn't work because they're, they're turning their head but not their body, so it, it doesn't give you an accurate representation here. And it's very important to have, when you're doing virtual consults or pre-consults where you're looking at pictures, it's very important to have standardized pictures. So don't try and take them yourself. Certainly you know somebody that can take your phone and take a picture. And so I'm gonna show you how I teach doctors how to take pictures. But the patients that are watching can use this exact information to take accurate and standardized pictures to send to me or whomever that they're sending pictures. So stick around, we're gonna show you that part. Now let's talk about phone pictures, but this applies to any camera. So if you're sending me head and neck stuff, uh, or sending any doctor, you don't need to have a patient's whole body in there, okay? What you wanna do is you wanna concentrate on the area that we're gonna be uh, discussing, okay? And usually for things that are perpendicular, we would use the um, portrait mode as opposed to the landscape mode. And it's very important to use your flash because if you take phone pictures uh, and you're not using your flash, uh, then they can be very distorted. And that's why people kind of freak out sometimes about how bad they look when they take a selfie and they really don't look that bad. So again, you don't want to get right up on top of the patient. You want to stand back about as far as I did before and zoom in, okay? And so it's very easy to take your picture, turn three quarter, all right? And you know, you don't, if you're, if you're just sending eye pictures, I mean, you know, that would be fine. If you're sending facelift or cheek implants or chin implant, then you want the whole head and neck. So those are some little tips with camera. And when you uh, mail the picture, when you email the pictures, don't compress them. Send them in uh, actual size because some people send pictures and they're, they're very compressed. So as phone and tablet cameras continue to improve, probably uh, dedicated uh, photograph cameras are gonna be a thing of the past. But it's important how you use this. And again, you really can't take accurate selfies and send them to somebody to make a diagnosis. So the first thing is a standardized background. Now I have friends that have photographic rooms in their office, which is great because the camera's fixed and you get an exact distance every single time. The problem is 
If you take a lot of pictures, which most good cosmetic surgeons do, you're going to have a big traffic jam for that room. So I want to be able to take pictures in every single room. So what I've done on the back of the door in each room, I have a little picture frame here on a track that slides up and down, and this is photographic cloth. So I can move this up or down for my patients. Now let's get a patient here and take some actual pictures. Come on in here. All righty. And now what you have to do when you put somebody in front of a camera, are you able to see me too, Eve and Shelly? When you put somebody in front of a camera, the first thing they do is they tighten up, okay? So you have to have them relax. Drop their shoulders. I don't want them to lean on the wall. Um, almost everybody wants to raise their eyebrows and they want to smile. So you have to make sure that they're in a normal posture. And also, and again, today is just a, um, a demonstration, but you want your pre-op pictures without makeup unless you're going to take your post-op pictures with makeup and you don't want jewelry and you want the hair back. So basically for the facial stuff, this is about the biggest picture I'll ever take from the sternum to the top of the head because that encompasses everything I do. So for our facelift uh, pictures, our cheek implant pictures, uh, that sort of thing, just put your chin down and just, just relax, drop everything. All right, there you go. So. Um, and this is a, uh, this is a Dyne Core, D-I-N-E-C-O-R-P camera. I get these from Lester Dyne. I've used them for decades. It's a great camera. It's drop proof. It's waterproof. And what they do is they take this uh, Olympus camera and they alter the firmware for uh, medical and dental photography. And you can put it in your pocket. You can take it from room to room. You can take it to the hospital, put it in your briefcase. And I think it just takes great pictures. So. Uh, and it also has 4K video capability. So we're going to start out and I'm going to take my picture. Now, what I see a lot of people do is they'll, they'll get real close to the patient. And what happens when you do this, I, she thinks it's funny, but that's okay, is it makes their nose big, it distorts them. So you want to stay back several feet, okay, about at least two feet. And you want to zoom in with your camera and use your flash. So that's my uh, frontal picture for three quarter. I'm going to turn the patient. Now this is important. I want the bridge of their nose to line up with the lateral canthus. Chin down a little bit and turn that way. And by doing that, and then you got to show them where to look. Okay. And relax. Don't smile. By doing that with the lateral canthus and the bridge of the nose, you always have a standardized picture. For my lateral picture, I want them to stare at the wall and just to, to relax and you try and take all your pictures from the same distance, which in this case is my uh, length from my elbow uh, to the patient. Um, so you can have a mark on the floor. And if I'm doing a facelift, I'm going to take a picture of the ear. Now we'll go back this way three. Oh, well, go back here. I'm sorry. We'll take a looking down picture. Just look at the ground. All right. So that's how we take that. Now let's go to the right three quarter. Okay. And again, the bridge of the nose in the lateral canthus, and I can see that better than you can. And then you have the patient look in a, in a neutral position. Are you able to see the camera too? I'm good. Okay. And take a half step forward, half step forward. Okay. That's good. All right. Now this is my Again, my facelift series, put your chin down there. Okay, very good. Relax your cheeks. All right. And I'll take another picture of the ear. Now, for eyelids, what we do here, very good, you're doing great. All right, so now I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to stand back like I am doing. I'm going to zoom in. And I, I just want this part of the face. Okay, now close your eyes. And I'll take that picture. All right. Now, look up, at, keep your head still, look at the ceiling. All right, and this is for lower lid bags. All right, now just look straight ahead at the wall in front of you. And with the patient, I've got to make sure they're not raising their brow. And this is my three-quarter view. And she blinked there, so you have to make sure that they're not blinking. Now, uh, for a lip lift, I'm going to take a picture of the lip. Give me a little, just a tiny smile. Show me your teeth. Yeah. Okay. Now big smile. Okay. Very good. And three quarter. Okay. Right there. Okay. And three quarter that way. So that's what we, that's what we like to have for our 
lip lift photography, okay? And um, so depending what you're, if you're taking pictures, uh, if we're doing a brow lift, obviously I'm gonna be here, uh, up higher. So a full face series and then any other thing that you're doing for, for chin implants or cheek implants, we're doing front, three quarter, three quarter. And um, then if you're, if you're a doctor, as not to, is not to um, lose whose pictures there are, just take a picture of the chart. 